How's it going? I'm Jesse Harvey. My name's Dear Laskowski. And I'm Mark Cataldi. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the uh, a drowsy driver warning system. Uh, the basic concept is we have two cameras inside the vehicle. One's monitoring the driver's eyes for blink, frequency, and duration to try to determine if they're becoming sleepy. The other camera is watching the roadway for sporadic lane changes or for the driver to leave their current lane. Um, cameras are feeding through the laptop which is running some, some software that we grabbed from open source and we also developed some of our own stuff. Um, the PC is interfacing with a control box which has a microcontroller inside which controls our warning system. Um, in the event of a hazard the warning system activates, turns on a, a loud buzzer and a, a massage. Um, we've, had the, we've had the system installed in the car and been doing a lot of testing uh, what we end up doing is running a pair of jumper cables. These, this isn't the pair, but we modified a pair of jumper cables, cut the end off, and actually modified it and added terminal or ring terminal so that we can hook it up to our power inverter. And this powers the laptop and everything else we need inside the car. So basically what we got here is on this left screen here you'll see Jesse's face. So right here we have driver detection and lane detection. So I flipped the switch to disable and it's going to inhibit all of the warnings that the software application is going to send to the microcontroller to okay. the warning system. So we can still get stuff from the lane detection, but we won't get anything from the face detection. We see that we, you know, Jesse can get in front of the camera here and it'll detect his face. What we have is the red box is going to surround what it thinks is his face and the white box is going to surround his eye. If I step out of the picture and it can't detect my face, it actually turns infrared LED on mm -hmm. you can see the effect that that has yes, when I bring it up to me. So it works perfect in case of uh, times of low light. And also what we did as a safety precaution when it can't detect the face, it also turns the, this LED red on the control box so the driver knows that it's not 100% reliable and we're having a problem with the system. Mm -hmm. um, so if we come back in and let it get the face back. See, it, it does much better without the glare. From the See, as I start blinking more frequently and, and for longer duration, it actually picks that up and hits our counter and says, okay, this guy's sleeping, we better sound the alarm and try to wake him up. Yep, everything, we end up setting up everything in uh, environment variables and in uh, Windows environment variables. You can modify the environment variable and relaunch the application and it'll reload those variables and run the application over again with the, the new setup configuration. Working with uh, some of these open source libraries, um, I know for once, for one, MPT was not very well documented, so anytime we tried to make some adjustments with that, it was really painful to try and figure out if we're going in the right direction. Well, one of the, the big issues is that we base most of this project on the image processing and in the, in the, the eye detection, so we are at the mercy of this, this image processing library. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's reliable most of the time, but you know, there's going to be, it's, it's, it's an image processing algorithm basically, and it's it has preset weights that it uses, mm -hmm. so it's not going to be 100% reliable for every face and every kind, every set of eyes and everybody in all condition. The project itself was, I think, more initial research would have helped out, but I mean, there's not a whole lot available for blink detection or right. um, this kind of this kind of subject really available. When I was working on the warning system. There was a lot of things that I thought were going to be trivial, but once I actually started to, you know, such as together, such uh, as well, we had well, Dieter had. Uh, hard time helping me out with the uh, with the piezo buzzer uh, and also with the vibration adapter because we got power feds and we got some Darlingtons and the specs weren't ever just right enough to work with my new controller smoothly so Dieter spent a lot of time talking with a lot of people to actually fix that. Uh, it was just we had to have the right components and the right configuration you know we had a uh by using the power fed, you know, it was, it was an end mod, so by just switching the position of it with the uh, massage pad, it worked or didn't work. Initially, we, we had gone through with our with our current rating for the uh, the massage pad in 150 milliamps or something, where after we actually got got the product and started testing more with it, we saw it was actually it was pulling more about like some part. In the end, we ended up compromising it at 500 milliamps to give us a nice jolt, but, you know, still not... So I actually drive in at 700 milliamps. Oh. It definitely be something to do with the uh, blink detection uh, because that really is, you know, that's the Achilles heel of our project. I think it would be, you know, for some people, face detection works better than others. And if we could somehow, you know, if we could bolster our knowledge of it to the point where we could actually improve on it, mm -hmm. <laughs> on the website actually about our testing with glasses, we actually have we have a demo video also that we we prepared 
okay. that shows some of the stuff and it ends up working. It's it's okay. Not as reliable as, as when you don't have the glasses, but it usually picks it up. Uh -huh. um, sometimes there's glare on the lenses that we get false right. positives where it can't actually see the eye, but it thinks it sees the eye because of the glare. 200 of that, 175 is just the, the cameras alone. So. There's lots of small parts other than that. Yep. Okay.